thinking about digital and digital technology is something that I've been passionate about for a long time. The reason for this is because I strongly believe that if we are able to embrace digital and technology, we will be able to indeed achieve the kind of vision that our president of Ghana actually has for us as a nation. As I speak here today, anyone who is not aware of the role of digital technology in transforming businesses or in the business landscape now must be living definitely in the past. Few have anticipated the kind of changes that we are seeing today. Most of us, including the millennials themselves, did not anticipate the acceleration in the changes that we have seen in the recent past. The solutions that are being provided today are things that only science fiction was about only a few, a few years ago. But, I, but as I speak today, there are companies like Amazon, Alibaba, Airbnb, Tonaton, and many others, others whose names you don't even recognize, like Zoo, Lenda, and so on. Those companies have been created because the ecosystem for digital and technology has changed. However, before I get into the details of my presentation, let me start by debunking some of the issues that we often touch on when we talk about technology and digital overall. The first one that I would like to debunk is that digital businesses or technologies are about the technology itself. Other business leaders that I've spoken to talk a lot about, I can change my processes and that should be enough to make me survive in a digital world, in a technology-led environment. And often I tell them, it's not about processes. It's got nothing to do with processes. It's not just about changing something that I used to do manually to doing it uh, using technology. In fact, when I look at the stats, it is very clear that only 25%, 25 to 30% of the issues are around automation or around processes that we improve as a result of actually moving a manual process into a digital process. The most value that people actually get from using technology is actually from operate, not just from operational efficiency, but it's from customer experience. When you transform your customer experience into the digital realm, you actually get somewhere in the region of 44 to 55% kind of improvement in your numbers. The one that excites me the most is around uh, new business models how you actually start looking at the customers in your own customers in a different way. Because there, you can fundamentally change your business. That changes the competition for you. That changes how you address other people. Your traditional competitors, if you are a bank, for example, now, for example, is you might say, as banks often say to me, there is now telcos. But 10 years ago, telcos and banks would have never been put in the same room to say these could be potential competitors. By the way, for the, for the record, I do not see banks as competitors to telcos. I do not want to be a competitor to a bank. I want to be a complementary service to a bank. I want to help the 70% the of the people in Ghana that today are not financially included to be financially included. Because I can bet my last dollar that GN Bank and many other banks do not want to put another building in another location. Okay, GN Bank might because you're still building out your, your branches, so I shouldn't say that about you. I must speak on another bank, okay? But, you know, you, I mean, today the difference between the, the points of presence where uh, mobile operators are able to, to, to actually service customers is in the magnitude of thousands. So today, Mobile operators through their agents have 80,000 agents on the ground. A bank, singularly, most probably the biggest bank, could most probably have at most 1,000 points of presence. So that just tells you about the scale of what we do and how different what we do is. The third one, that, the third issue that I would like to debunk is the issue around how we embrace technology overall, our IT infrastructure. For me, 
the day we are able to actually embrace the CIO, the CEO, into a common person, into a common person, then we will actually have the best of both worlds. I am not a CIO. I was not trained in technology. So one day my role might be uh, taken by someone today who is a chief technology officer or chief information officer. Because I genuinely believe that it is, it is those kind of people, once exposed to the greater good of the business, that are able to also accelerate the businesses that we actually see today. In today's world, the level of digitization through technology is so rapid that the lifespan of any product, of any innovation, is somewhere between two and 12 months. What this means is that soon, as, a, as soon as a new innovation comes into the scene, another one replaces it at a flick, in a flicker of a second, rendering any great innovations outdated. Such is the world that we live in, a world that is so unique that I shudder to think what my great-grandfather would think of this phenomenon. He most probably would say we are insane or we are mad. We live in a fast-paced world, fast cars, fast food, fast connections, and many other fast things. I would not say fast marriages too. <laughs> yeah. Of the truth though, most in inventions these days fail because they get their timing wrong. But just because you get your timing wrong doesn't mean it's a failed innovation. Many innovations, including that of Apple, including that of Amazon, around one click, for example. Actually, the first time they tried it, it failed. The second time they actually implemented it, it worked. So when people actually come to me and come with a product set around, around our technology and innovation, I often ask them, what products do we have in our shelf that we've used in the past that have failed? Because it is the thinking that will differentiate the losers and the winners. It is not only technology. One key question we should all ask and try to answer before we leave here today is what exactly does technology mean to all of us and what does it mean for our business? Sometimes I wonder, should I actually look to the Luddites in our society and give them a thumbs up for actually being aversive or their aversive tendency to watch technology? Or should I, should I regard businesses, especially those who actually talk to me, without a comprehensive technological plan or technology foundation with absolute disdain? If you do not actually focus on technology today, your business will fail. In Ghana, not all businesses today actually embrace this fact. This, make, this making um, uh, technology an integral part of their, operation, of their operations. By the way, I do not blame some of these businesses because people in technology actually talk a lot of jargon. I don't know how many of you have heard about big data, SQL, and so many other words that they choose to use by themselves that confuse the rest of us. You know, if someone actually came to me and said, Yolanda, big data is only about how do you optimize actually getting to a customer, making sure that you maximize revenue from that customer, or servicing a customer better, or improving a process. I would have understood it. I would have understood it. Wouldn't you have? I would have understood it, but they chose to explain to me when they explain big data around the kind of servers that are used, the kind of operations that are used. And then they took, I mean, I don't know how many of you have used open source like uh, Hadoop and all those. I have never heard of those kind of names before. They all sound like animals, you know? <laughs> and and, and you, you spend more time actually researching all this thing that they're saying than actually implementing or using the tools themselves. So I hope all these technology people and the technology people that are here, that they could simplify our lives. 
So I really do not blame people that are actually averse to the use of technology. Because most of us are actually unsure and sometimes confused about what is the right solution. Today, someone will tell you about Amazon Cloud. Tomorrow, they'll tell you another about another cloud. The following day, they'll tell you another, about another cloud. And you're like, but when I go outside, I see clouds, I don't understand what the cloud has to do with my business, you know? Um, so it, it is around simplification. And it is here that I'm gonna say to you, we do have an enterprise wing at Vodafone called Vodafone Business. And I encourage you to actually have a chat to them because some of the issues that we are, we are dealt with and businesses are forced to deal with are actually confusing. Vodafone stock in trade is at the core of what we do every day in terms of actually transforming everyday problems into meaningful solutions. Every microsecond, and I mean every microsecond, each day across the world, people are using our products. Our roots in Africa are also very well entrenched. And in this regard, I would like to highlight one of uh, the success stories of Vodafone which is Safaricom in Kenya. In Kenya today, Safaricom is the biggest, is the biggest mobile money platform in the world. Everyone actually copies, everyone copies Safaricom. Safaricom is a sister company to Vodafone. And when you actually go to Kenya and you see how they have integrated not just the whole notion or strategy around a cash light society, but how they have integrated everything they do, what government does, how they make payments, how they've created an entire ecosystem around actually making sure that businesses are successful is really important. Vodafone, we have done a lot of things. People always say, Yolanda, do you actually drink your own medicine when it comes to technology? And I often say, yes, I do. Uh, one of the challenges that we had in the business is that we, we actually had to deal with some of our operating costs, like many of you in the room. I'm certain many of you understand when your manager, actually every year the manager, when you do budgeting, they say you have to cut costs by 20 to 25% or something ridiculous like that. And you're like, how are we going to do that? You know, I still have the same number of people. I still have to deliver more stuff than what I delivered last year. There's wage inflation, there's this, there's this. And one of the things that we chose to do uh, in the past year is actually to get our staff to design a new app. And the app is a carpooling app. And what, what literally happens is that the com the, anyone who comes to the office now, if there's someone else en route to, in the same area, now, instead of having five cars coming to, 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 to the business, we actually have one car carrying four, four people. And that on its own actually has given us, on that particular line, savings of over 30% in cost. And, and what I'd like to highlight, this app was actually designed by our own staff. And when I say our own staff, you're gonna say no, they come from the technology department. And I'm going to tell you, no, they actually did not come from the technology department. They came from HR and they came, see, that's where thinking matters. It's first you have to think it before you can design it. So it came from HR and strategy. So it is important that we keep on thinking and forcing ourselves how we use digital technology. The other service that I can point on is on fleet services. Just being able to monitor the amount of traveling and the fuel consumption. Have you ever noticed that fuel disappears? There's a driver that actually puts pet, uh, uh, fuel on a Monday and they have to fuel again on a Wednesday and fuel again on Friday and then again on Monday. But there is a driver that drives similar route that fuels on a Monday, then on a Thursday, and then next week again. So what is the difference between the two? So I say, I say fuel evaporates out of the car. So I don't know how people do it, but if you are able to actually monitor the kilometers, where people are stopping, where people are doing things, and also that fuel just does not magically evaporate, you know, you are able to save your business a lot of money and actually get efficiencies 
we are able to optimize even the routes that people use. Today, there are applications like Waze, which tell you that in order to get from point A to point B, taking traffic into account, this is how long that trip should take. When your people are taking three times as long to get to that same destination, there is something wrong. So how do you use technology to actually uh, be able to, 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 to further your business? I mean, the one that is uh, close to my heart is around antimony. Who knows antimony from here? So there's a lot of people that eat a lot of watching. Okay. <laughs> antimony used to actually send her money to the north via VIP passes. That's what she used to do. You know? And how many hours does it take from here to, to Tamale and to the north? Okay. So by VIP bus, not by plane, by VIP bus. We're not using Starbucks here, you know? And, and then on the other side, that money had to be given to someone else, and that someone else had to pay for something, whether it was raw materials or other things or inventory that she needed, and then be brought back sometimes, other times, actually for consumption in the norm. And she, just by using mobile money as a solution, mobile money as a solution, she is now able to instantaneously actually transfer money from here to the right person to do what she actually wants to do. That eliminates the an entire process. It, I'm not sure if it makes VIP passes less or more sustainable, but you know, it, it definitely makes her business a more sustainable business and a more reliable business to, to actually do business with. So technology can indeed transform issues. There's been a number of studies done around how technology can actually improve uh, uh, business performance. And today I am not here to actually give you a lot of studies, but there's been studied by Deloitte, by MIT, by Singularity University, and many others. So all I'm gonna say today instead is that in Ghana, businesses, both large and small businesses, and medium-sized businesses as the mainstay of our economy and big contributors to our growth. We need you to be interested in transforming your business into a digital world. It is our responsibility, therefore, to find ways that businesses can take advantage and leverage the deliverables, in order, deliverables under the acceleration of technology to be more successful. But what does technology mean, again, to the average business? It is important for us that you actually think of technology around your business model itself. How do you get business growth? How do you attract new customers? How do you service customers better? How do you develop new products? For us, our strategic focus is around igniting the digital revolution in Ghana. And so far, we are on course. However, as Vodafone, we need you to also start your digital journey. We have done many things as a business around investing in our own infrastructure. We have invested over 2.5 billion in the, dollars in the last nine years in our infrastructure. We have come up with solutions where we have actually started including the non-included in our society, like for example, a product that we that we actually introduced a few months ago, which is specifically for the hearing and the speech impaired, where we are able to service them better today. We've got instant schools where we provide instant um, instance education and free education to many, many of our, of our, of our subscribers and non-subscribers today. I want you to think about how you can leverage the Internet of Things around fleet management, around how you actually do your business better in order to monitor your own assets, in order for you to be more prosperous and actually have a more efficient uh, business going forward. For me, therefore, there are three big main themes that I would like to leave you with today. Is that in technology, we can use technology to improve revenue, better our customer service, as I said, it simplifies our processes, we work faster and have increased efficiencies, improve employee communication, crowdsourcing, 
data analytics, and connectivity. However, here are the three main things that I would like to leave you with today. The cost of technology has significantly gone down. What does that mean? What is the implication of that? It means that the setup cost of any business you want to do today is actually reduced to almost nothing. If I wanted to start a bank, for example, uh, 10 years ago, even five years ago, I needed a heck of a lot of infrastructure. Today, I can have a virtual bank and I can start it in my own kitchen. Today, there are banks that have been started in kitchens, in garages, and so on. So there is no excuse for anyone not actually starting today. So all we have to think about is how do we leverage the fact that setup costs today have come to almost zero. Today, the consumption models that all the big players, including the IBMs of this world, including the Ericsson's of this world, the Cisco's and so on, have come up and said, I, I am happy to have a pay user model. A uh, few years ago, when you wanted a, um, a server, they would say it will cost you a million dollars. Most of us can't afford a million dollars just for a server. However, today, they say for $200, you can have an access on a per user basis. So that has significantly changed the game, which means the kind of access to services that you can have today, should be, you should be thinking about them differently to actually just owning your infrastructure. So what are the business models that you are building today in order to make sure that you are sustainable in the future? The second thing that I would like to give you with is that it has never been this easy to get to customers. It is so irritatingly easy that people have even gotten lazy, to be honest. Some people just put posts on Facebook, and that's it. But it's never been this easy in history. Just, just think about it. About 10 years ago, if you wanted to actually reach customers, do you remember how hard it was? If you wanted to reach 100 customers a day, you were talking nonstop for about eight hours. Now you put one post and it's seen by 10,000 people. And you can prove that it was seen by 10,000 people. So what is it that you've changed in terms of your own business behavior in making sure that you are getting to the customer? So it has never been this easy in history with the kind of social media platforms that we have and digital platforms to get to our customers. However, the biggest challenge now is a, is a different one. It is how do you get the attention of the customer? Because they are actually being bombarded every second by new information. In fact, the research now shows that the attention span of, a, of an average human is actually seven seconds. That's one second less than a goldfish. One second less. Attention span of a goldfish is eight seconds. We are at seven seconds. So how do you get the attention? How do you grab the attention of your customers? And there, we actually have to use then analytics, Facebook analytics, to actually understand your customers. What are they doing? What else are they doing? And how we use smart digital marketing tools, uh, search engine optimization, and so many other products in order to make sure that we are, they are engaging with us in a way that is meaningful. In this regard, I'd like to cite one example. You know, in, in terms of uh, what we do as a business, we, we always uh, do TV. Everyone does TV advertising, you know. They're like, your marketing team will tell you, if you don't have TV on this product, it's not gonna work. And in Vodafone, we actually tried it with one product where we say, we will have no TV on this product. We will use digital only, digital media, to actually get there and we will use radio selectively. And that product today, that product is called Vodafone X. Have you seen Vodafone X on TV? Never. But today, most companies actually allocate more than 75% of, of their advertising spending on TV. 
I'm not saying there's anything wrong with TV. You have to have different courses for different, I mean, different courses for different courses. So it is absolutely crucial that you understand that digital is an enabler. And Vodafone X is one of our most successful products that we have as a business. The winner, which is my last point for today, the winner is the one who will understand the customer the most. Technology will enable everything that you do, but it will not be able to substitute for thinking. Unfortunately, the old adage, the old saying around the mind is the one that rules the universe will still hold true, even in the world of a digital or in the world of technology. There is absolutely no substitute to actually applying your mind. Apply your mind, apply your mind. The solutions that you seek, the solutions that your customers seek are all around thinking about it and actually being very explicit and deliberate about the delivery. Therefore, our focus and our responsibility then as a company and as a telecom company in particular is therefore to be a one-stop shop for all of you to provide you with the adequate training, the adequate support to be able to do the things that you need to do. We have gone a step further for most businesses and in the next few days we will be introducing something called a ready business test in which all businesses can go onto a portal and actually test themselves around how ready are they for a digital kind of environment. And then there we will propose specific tools within Vodafone and outside Vodafone where we actually recommend that you go because this test actually we've developed as part of the Vodafone uh, uh, kind of uh, platform and we are able to see the results for many companies around the world that have actually done the test and have been true to the implementation of some of the digital recommendations that they actually have received. So therefore, in conclusion, remember, if you decide to stand still, you will die as a business. If you decide that this is too complicated and too confusing, and therefore I will be uh, stationary, you will die as a business. Technology has been demystified. Technology has been made cheaper. The cost of acquisition of a customer has never been this cheap. So it is now that we should act with more boldness than we've ever done before. For me, what I use as a reminder around changing and accepting technology for the, for the better and to improve our business is reminding myself that there is a 15-year-old or a 20-year-old or a 19-year-old sitting in some university trying to disrupt my business model. And they are unapologetic about it. And if you don't remind yourself that every day you are actually facing a new threat that you don't know about, that you don't know which angle they're going to come from and which part of your business they are going to disrupt. Because somehow we have believed that someone is going to come and take all my business. No one is coming to take all your business. People are coming for specific components of your business. It's only specific components that they are taking. But there's many of them. One is coming this side, one is coming this side, one is coming that side. And if you do not recognize that, that there is someone who is trying to disintimidate your business, then you will die, and I will be there at the funeral. Because I'm gonna tell you, I was here to tell you, this is the time to act with boldness, this is the time to act now.